to spray to spirit. Amen, and I'm in my. <laughs> oh, yeah, what's up? Today's ah. I've been having network issue for the past one week in my house. I don't know whether it's a general network issue. So, and um, my battery is quite down. I think I have about 38%. So, um, I want to be, it's going to be a pretty short, going to be a pretty short, um, going to be a pretty short um, live broadcast. Um. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty short live broadcast. I needed to do it uh, because uh, a lot of persons said uh, I've traveled. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't travel. I've been, I've been either busy or there was a time I was not feeling too well. I wasn't feeling too well. Then last week, it was network problem. I was online, but the network was supposed to talk about the principle um, um, of Ikadeline, uh, uh, the principle of Ikadeline and all of that. But along the line, I don't know what happened. The network was bad. I couldn't. So, but today, uh, maybe we we'll, we we'll have to reschedule that topic of Ikadeline, Nobaya de Doi. Uh, today we we'll have to talk about the principle of, uh, Bini tight, bini kingdom tight. Ne ne do tie i moha. You know the principle and its blessings. Um, and its blessings. We're going to be talking about the principles of what we call the bini kingdom tight. Again, that day, Maria pay tight. When the church is you pay tight. We no longer do that, and there is a blessings that are attached to it, and uh, that we are no longer getting. So I want to talk about it. This topic was inspired by a conversation that I had with some community um, leaders uh, a few days ago. So I had to educate them on some certain things. Then, uh, I, had to, I, I had to educate them on some certain things. Then, and I, and I, and I, and I got a revelation from that discussion that um, the Benin should look into um, this critical aspect of our history. In Eduti Imoha, Egenede Irima Igwe, Prominent figures, communities, it's more like uh, um, you know, um, a lot of religion has taken aspect of this very vital part of our of our history, of our tradition, not even history, 
of our traditions, of our, of our cultural heritage. And I wish to use this, my platform, to speak on this matter so that the Benin people will understand the concept of Imoa and the, cons and the consequences of it. All right. And so let's look at this. It's going to be a very short topic. It's going to be a very short topic. And um, because, like I said, there are factors that is going to make this topic very short. Factor number one, I have a quite low battery. So I can't charge and doing live. You know, this techno, all this techno from once you are doing a live program, you are charging, it heats up. So um, it burns up and you know, the phone starts misbehaving. And secondly, um, the network has been terribly bad in this my area for the past one week. All right. Uh, so I'll just do about 20, 25 minutes lecture. Then if there are questions that can that you want to ask, you can ask the questions. And then, so if you want to also contribute, you want to join this our program, you can also join this program. But most importantly, let's share our live video. Our live videos are supposed to be everywhere so that um, people can learn things from from our platform so ensure you share and ensure you invite uh all of your friends so that they can join so that they can listen to the voice of wisdom and the voice of our ancestors now christianity has a system of paying offering and tithes as a sort of a right um, sort of as what is required in their Christian faith. As Benin people of the old, we also have a sort of a tithe that we were paying, but only that it was not mandated, but it was, it was not like there was a law that says we must do it. All right. But it was consciously, it was part of our being that it is what is required from us as an Edo people. Imoha. The palace completely relies on the goodwill of its people. And completely relies on the goodwill of the people. Um, the worthy in the kingdom and the prosperous uh, villages and all of that. So they had a concept of carrying gifts to the palace as their customary right and rule in understanding the relevance of the palace to the very foundation of the Benin people. The blessings, after these communities were presented with these gifts at the end of the year, that's where you do it, where the Urbana pray for the entire Benin kingdom for more bountifulness. All right, but the concept of the prayer on most of these villages or the the people in Benin Kingdom can no longer be that too effective because we have also failed in the role of annually, individually, personally going to give gifts to the palace. It was a concept that was not forced. It was a concept. It was a voluntarily concept that became part of our existence. It wasn't important. I've always been giving, I've always explained a particular history of the Edo people. And I want us to draw the significance of paying tithes, not just tithes to the palace, when I mean tight, I'm not saying I'm using the concept of tight so that people can understand. Uh, I want to draw 
one very important event during or by a while. And I want to be able to tie my hypothesis that there are consequences of of na no heke ne do na yimu agioba. There are consequences. And it is something that I believe that every Edo man and Edo woman should revive. Because it's an extant part of our cultural heritage. At the end of the year, it is important. I have not been doing it, me myself, but I will start it this year. At the end of the year, I should be able to say, Dete Meluakba no, or Dizzy 20 no, Gavio Giagua. Why? Because I now begin to draw the history of the birth of Ezoti. Oloa and Ozoloa. And I begin to draw the significance of what later became their fate that was tied to Imoha. On several occasions, on several occasions, I have talked about what led to the birth of Ezoti, or by Ezoti, or by Olua, and or by Zolua. There is one significant thing I've always said, but I did not know the spiritual implication of it until I got a revelation in these past few days. I remember the story goes thus far that at the later stage of Obaiwai the first, Avun lost his two sons. He could not sire other children until there was a man, there was a law that was enacted by by why the first that there should not be cooked food in the kingdom for three years there should not nobody in the kingdom including himself should not take his bath for three years thirdly there should not be any sexual intercourse in the kingdom for three years but there was a man who broke that law. All right. Along the line, it was investigated that a man gave birth and they discovered the child was a few months old. How did you give birth when the law that was placed about by why the first is it's 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 over a year? Then and you're having a child that is less than a year. That means at the time he has already given that law and you broke the sacred law, so the man was was uh, invited to the kingdom, the, the capital punishment would have been death sentence. All right? It was invited to, to the palace, and the Oba inquired that I put a law. My, me, myself, I've kept to the tenants of the law. But why would you break the law? And he told Oba why the first that, Domo Mogun, it's been a very long time he's been trying to sell a child. And eventually God and ancestors have blessed him through a powerful seer from Uzziah. And that Obaiwai does not have a child of his own. That if he was softening his heart, he could show him that man from Uzziah to also do the same medicine for him that he might give birth to all the children, even at his old age. By why I eventually pardoned him and requested that that um, native daughter from Uziek come to Benin. So he, he explained everything to him. Now, the man had promised that Obaya Wai was going to give birth to three sons. So he instead is going to give three separate medicine 
to Abiyawai to sign three separate songs. Now, the first day that that medicine was prepared, some people from Benin Kingdom, Iana Yimwa, they came to the palace to present gifts from their farm produce. But when they were bringing the gifts from their farm produce, they brought the worst of the worst from their farm produce. And at the, and at the level of the presentation of the gift, the seer saw the gift that was being presented to Omar, that was being presented to the palace. He prophesied as a result of the gift that was given that the child, that this medicine will be used in, eh, that will be used, uh, that will be sighed with. The child that this medicine will be born with will be very stingy because it is out of the stinginess of the mind of an Edo man that they brought this gift to the palace. So the gift, Nedotie Imoa, is tied one way to the other, to the growth of Benin Kingdom and of the palace. That historical fact shows, buttress my explanation, eventually a child was born. And that child's name was later to be known in history as Ezoti. Ezoti was recorded as the most stingy of our Benin. Very stingy. Very stingy. <laughs> and what they would call an excess parsimony. Very stingy. Oh, man, uh, they really see me. Then another day, this year came. He produced another medicine. When he was producing the medicine, another set of Edo people came in Abe Yimoa, came to present gifts to Omar, and they brought the best of the best from their farm produce. And the native daughter also saw the gift that the Benin people brought to the palace of the Oba of Benin. And he told Omar that the medicine that you will side this child with, the child that you be side with this medicine will be excessively kind-hearted because it is out of the kind-heartedness of an Edo man that this child was sighed in the presence, in the spirituality of Imoha, that this child was sighed. I don't know whether be, I don't know whether we are getting the spiritual connection between Imoha and Bini Kingdom generally from this historical fact. And eventually, a child was sowed, and it was later to be known as Obaolua. And that Obaolua is regarded as the most kind-hearted of all the Obas of Benin. The most kind-hearted of every Obas of Benin. Then the third one, The third medicine that was prepared for by Y, the day that medicine was prepared, and heavy rain fell, and heavy rain fell, and the native daughter also told him, or by Y, that the, that the child that you're going to born with this medicine on the day that the rain fell will be a greater warrior than you are. And that child was named Prince Okpame, who was later to become a Baozorwa Niba Omiekon. What I'm trying to explain to you, I'm trying to make us from historical point of view, connect the concept of Imoha, Nedowa Yayegwa, 
and the numerous blessings that abound from it in the life of every Edo man. It was customary in the old that Ukpoga Agba Agi Yimua Gyegwa either as individual or as communal it was voluntary. It wasn't forced. It is what is required. It is, it is like a country that works. A country that works. What is required as a citizen of the country that works. I'm not talking about Africa. I'm not talking about Nigeria. That as a citizen of, of, of for example, of United Kingdom, it is requested that you pay tax. It is your obligation, as far you earn, you must pay tax. It is your obligation. And there are a lot of things that are bound from paying tax. And that is the development that you see around you in this civilized country, because you pay tax. It is also customary how it was. It was also customary uh, it was in Benin, and it is a part of our of our history, of our being, of our existence that we need to revitalize. Na a lot of you are in overseas, and you begin to ask the Aya Yimoa, the palace door or gate is open. If you can't do it yourself, you can send your family members. It's not money. Add you go ye more. Then yano. Do ho ho no. De we no. De milano. Oke ke ni viet do de be a ye more. There are so many blessings that are bound. There are several blessings that are bound for it, for those sons and daughters, for us to revitalize. And I haven't done it before, but this year, I must be more. What prompted me was I met some young lads in one of the community we were discussing some business related matters. So they obviously um, they sold land to a very big est um, estate developer and all of that. The palace called them, and the palace had warned them that um, the land that they sold to the estate developer was too big. And the palace, I think the palace now asked them. With all of the money that all of these communities are making, when was the last time that any of them ever deemed it fit? That uh, So those guys were not telling me that it seems like why would they be we have why? What's in Ahana Yimo and Gebwai? And I lecture them that it is out of the ignorance of their mind. It is like you've been asked as a Christian that why do you pay tithe? You've been asked as a good citizen of a country, then why do you pay tax? Um, you've been asked why being paid tax as a good citizen in a country that, that it works. It's very, it's very important. It is part and parcel of our very existence, our very being as a those sons and daughters, Nanayimoa. It's very important. Why it is important is that I asked them a question. How do you think the palace takes care of their of their expenses? Do you think is the money that the government brings? The government sends quite a little amount of money to the palace. It is the citizenry that finances per se. The palace. It is the burden. The palace is like the burden of the Edo people. It has always been like that. 
And it is something we are very proud of. I want to let, let me not get to, because of all of these people misinterpreting words, let me not use the word burden. It is, it is the responsibility of an Edoma to ensure that the palace is well taken care of. That was the concept of Imoa. Your one era, your two era, your one to baronia means a lot. It sustains. It sustains the, the palace. And when the palace is sustained, the kingdom itself is sustained. It is, it is the home of our blessings. And there's always a principle of you give and you take. And there are bounds of blessings that come with it. So I want to implore. I want to implore that we start to look keenly into what I've just suggested. A hundred thousand, a two hundred thousand, you know, doesn't take anything from your pocket at the end of the year that a new year guy, new year guy na hina. All right, there are a lot of blessings that are bound. A lot of people bragged about the world as a result of the tithe that they pay to church or to God. Does also let, let us also start bragging of our successes as a result of Imuana Yo Gegwa at the end of the year. So we have to start revitalizing. It is only good that we start educating these communities, we start educating ourselves of the importance. Okay, I told the concept of Imoa. No, a Nedoti Imoa, you know, the gift. Anything, any gift. Uh, if you want to go and give someone a gift, you call it a uh, Noma. But in, in the cycle of the palace, the concept of giving anything to the palace, Imoa means I want to go and do what is, I want to give to the palace out of the abundance of what I have. Anytime, any specific time, I am Yemoa. You know, salo bayari e yo worryon. I am Yemoa. You understand? So, in other words, when the palace started to begin to see that some of these things, we are revitalizing it gradually. We are revitalizing it, and. People always believe, in modern times, people always believe that you take from the palace. In the old, it wasn't always like that. Benin people were not taken from the palace. I've seen people advocating for the palace, but they are being paid to advocate for the palace. You don't get blessings from the palace from taking from the palace. You get blessings from the palace by giving to the palace. Ayi mo it is out of the abundance of gifts, of the, the, the kind-heartedness of the Oba, that it, is, it blesses some people. But customarily, what is right is that, All right, so there is no time to do that. There, there are no specific time, but most times, Komina Imoa is usually done during the end of the year. That is a community but individually, as at the time, Nenika was a new book. You understand? And when the palace begin to see that, ah, ah, ah ordinarily on, on, on a weekday, on our, on our Mohi lost it. Like, do we go? Ah, even in do you more? They'll be shocked. It will make them remember. The customary right of what was necessary, what was a mean a weird do over and not burning. Then you bring you. I'm sure the palace will be happy about it. I'm sure they will be grateful about it. I'm sure it will it will invoke some aspects or practices of the palace that they don't longer deem fit because. We are also have failed to also practice some aspect of our culture that we felt is no longer necessary. And again, what do I know? 
it's just a thought. Like I always think, Tata foi mo bow, o makame o, o makame o. Tata foi na na wa miome. So for the young man who asked, were the three sons of Obai why the Obas have been in? Yes, they were all Obas. And I've talked about that several times. They were all about Obai, not your Obai, all about Ozolwa. Three of them were all about. So I've talked about that several times. So I don't want to dwell on that today. So, and I hope we all have been able to My generator. <laughs> so I hope I've been able to educate all of us today to learn from this aspect of our culture. And I pray that God and our ancestors put it in our minds to be able to see the revelation behind this topic. And I hope and pray that we are able to run with it, all right? If there are any question, if there are any contribution, like I said, my battery is pretty low, and um, I've spoken for about 30 minutes, and um, I think so, I've spoken for about 30 minutes. So if there are any contributions, we contribute. It's going to be a very short uh, sermon. It's going to be a very short topic, all right? And so we can round up quickly and not do it too much on what is brief and short. So if there are no questions, you ask your questions so that um, we can quickly rub our minds together. Otherwise, so as I get, as I get tired, many years I get full. Uh, uh, So I'm sorry that today's topic is very short. I would have loved to talk more, but there are very many reasons why it cannot be that too long. Very many reasons. Low battery, um, bad network. Even, even my generator is misbehaving. I Nigeria and I will not react. You understand? <laughs> so, and um, I want to want to use this opportunity to appreciate all of you who are my followers, who are my fans, who have patronized me for um, uh, getting properties from me. I'm really, really grateful. You guys are very, very amazing. I'm really, really grateful. It's been, it's been very inspiring for me. Was there with you, All right, and so, and also keep telling friends that I'm sure that all the transactions that you've had with me have not had any issues, any issues at all as regards the smooth transaction of me handling, handling your properties and handing your paperwork to you without any cost for alarm. We were expanding. So I've been very busy for the past three weeks because we just acquired two more estates and um, I've been traveling. So we now have at uh, Upper Airport Road. So if you also will be interested, you should also let me know. And um, so, uh, and for some of our, um, two of our sisters, through this platform that got property from me in Abuja, I'm also very grateful. I don't want to mention their names, but I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, God and our ancestors um, continue to bless you guys for patronizing one of your very own brother, Zodua. So I think um, um, uh, there are no much anything to talk about. If you have any questions, maybe much later on, you can call through uh, my personal line, we can trash it, then um, my phone is almost, so, so that it doesn't go off. 
So, but on Sunday, I'm sure that I'll be much, much prepared. But I just wanted to let you know, I just wanted you guys to be aware that um, uh, I apologize for being absent for past three weeks. Um, I had health issues. I traveled a couple of times. But I'm fine now. And I'm a bit stable for a week or two. So you know how business is. My business requires travel all the time out of those states and all of that. But um, I'll make our time to ensure that um, if, even if I don't come on Sundays, we can reschedule during the week, you know, so that um, I don't create a gap where we don't get to learn one or two things at the end of the day. So, so, but however it is, um, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to be here once again on this platform, to be able to relate or interact with all of you. Uh, so I'm going to round up now. Why I always say, so about this topic, I want us to put in the back of our mind how important it is. Oh, heck, in a more. Your back. So, why I say so, we'll see next week, this coming week on Sunday. So, we'll have a longer time to talk about a very important aspect of our topic, then uh, so that we can also rub minds. Um, about talk, well, it's said.